Hey, hey, bougie besties. Welcome back to Living Bougie in Balance. And today in the Bougie Lounge, you're going to be learning about how to start your own assisted living business. I'm so hyped about this interview, though, because how many people do you know that have started their own assisted living business? Anytime we're on social media, it's always digital product this, start an online course this, you know, become some sort of um, coaching uh, program or something like that. But I have seldom have seen anybody hop on here and really educate about starting your own business through the lane of assisted living. And when Martha and I connected, She's like, hey, sis, this is my business model. I can help people do this. I've done this strategically time, time over time, and now I'm ready to help other people. So I was like, sis, I have to have you on the podcast. I need to pick your brain. And so now we're here all the way from Miami. Yes. <laughs> all the way from Miami. Martha, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm excited to be here in Atlanta. Yay. Yes. <laughs> Didn't know what was going to happen, but thank God I'm still here. I was terrified. Feel me. I know. I know. <laughs> Dr. Tyrone Butler. When you say it, like, you, you have a heart. <laughs> Before we even get into the whole assisted living business framework. Yes. What made you take this career path and, and, and starting your own business with this? Like, what is your backstory? So um, I've always loved helping people. Um, I'm a nurse practitioner by trade. So working as a nurse, I kind of had an idea. This is where I wanted to be. But then I got tired of people telling me when to work, when, uh, when to vacation and all of that. And then I noticed seniors as well to the elderly. Um, how they were treated in the hospitals, the how many times they're coming in. And I had this one patient mm -hmm. and I remember she was just there for months. And I remember telling her, you know, if I could take you home, I would. And I thought about it. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started thinking a home care business and the assisted living facility came about. So I take care of seniors. I provide housing, meals, activities. Mm -hmm. So it just started, you know, like that for my trade, nursing. So you were in the nursing field for how many years? Um, over 10 years now. You, you, you actually worked that as a career. And then uh, you noticed an area that you could uh, succeed in to a certain capacity if you just followed what you wanted to do in that lane. Exactly. Did you notice that? in the field that there was a need for what you do specifically? Yes, I noticed that because um, there was a lot, a lot of elderly coming in and the reasons why they were coming in just didn't make any sense to me. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was as simple as um, them needing help to get their medications, to take their medications. Mm -hmm. Some of them were, you know, double taking, double dosing on mm. the same thing. Um, some of them was uh, were malnourished. It was just different things. And I, and sometimes the family members, it's not their fault. They work. So you can't stop working. So um, those are the things that I noticed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are the things that I noticed. And so when you started your assisted living uh, business, what were some of the the hardest uh, mountains you had to over you had to overcome? OK, so when I came up with the idea of what I wanted to do, I would say one of my downfalls was not thinking of the business aspect. Mm -hmm. So I'm a creative person. Mm -hmm. If I'm interested in something, I'm going for it. How do you do it? Mm -hmm. Think about it later. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so I got it together and then I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I have the licensing now. I'm getting clients now how to run the business structure it mm -hmm. so clients were coming in i'm getting staff and i just had to learn the basics of business um you know budgeting payroll how to hire who to hire and you know just being a leader i'm a natural leader but when you take on a business role you have to make sure you're structured mm -hmm. so um i guess the hardest thing for me was just putting that business hat on, not just the creative nurse, but more so business oriented.
So you're gifted in being a visionary. Yes. Yes. But you know what? I'll say this. Mm -hmm. Most people will create the structure. They'll have the systems. They'll have everything ready to go. And they never press the start button. Right? Yeah. But being a visionary, (laughs) we will jump clean off of a cliff with the idea and be like, I said I was going to do it. I'm going to do it. And we get it. And we're like. I'm missing some things. Right. I need to figure that was it out. Me. But you press start. Yes. And you did it. Yes. Because I can tell you with certainty, there are so many people who will have everything they need mm-hmm. and will not move forward with it because of fear, because they feel like they have don't have enough uh, education behind them. Mm-hmm. So they're constantly conditioning themselves to think, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Where you were like, I'm going to go do this. And because you stepped yeah. out and you did it, you forced yourself to figure the other stuff out. Right. So really like kudos to you Thank for you. doing that because you did it. Thank you. And, um, and you're now able to help, you know, seniors who need you, your service, your your structure, your systems, how you would like to see uh, the business function opposed mm-hmm. to what you felt like some other places may not have been doing properly. Mm-hmm. Now you're able to get that done. And I think that is so beautiful. Thank you. What, let me ask you something and what you do, cause you take care of senior citizens mm-hmm. and um, even from being a banker, right? I've seen senior citizens get taken advantage of. They really do. Um, from money fraud mm-hmm. uh, to just how they're spoken to by, you know, their family members mm-hmm. or whoever their caretakers are and stuff. So what did you seek out to do differently than other assisted living facilities? So I, for each person that comes in, I'm their advocate. Mm -hmm. So if you're bringing in your grandmother, I see your grandmother as mine, Mm -hmm. as my family member. I see them as someone that I have to protect because I've had times where family members or friends would come in with their elderly and their motive is to c- collect the check, mm-hmm. collect their check mm-hmm. um, from the things that they request. And um, money is not the biggest thing to me because not every money is good money, clean money. Mm-hmm. So when I do notice that, I vouch for that elderly person. So what sets me apart is that I make sure that I build that relationship. Mm-hmm. I'm their advocate and I treat them like family. Yeah. Yeah. That's I treat them beautiful. like family. Thank you. So what made you want to pursue now teaching other people how to do what you do? Um, people call me all the time. How did you get this business started? Um, what did you do? And I noticed people making the same mistakes that I did mm-hmm. going by what other people said to do and then people losing out on money. But re- what really affected me in a way was sometimes I'd be on the phone hours at a time Mm -hmm. with people giving them valuable information just for them not to to do it not to do it Mm -hmm. because they'd rather be students of the information than be executors of the information right exactly Mm -hmm. so yeah yeah (laughs) for all the people that had me on the phone Mm -hmm. no but next time you call you're gonna have to pay (laughs) exactly um but yeah so many people were asking about it And then those people that the people that actually do have the licensing, um, they do things a little, you know, a sticky way where Mm -hmm. it's not um, it's not safe. Mm -hmm. So for me, when I decided to start this course, I wanted to make sure that I'm giving um, I'm offering quality education. Um, I'm building up like quality assisted living facility leaders. Um, and then I also want to change that, uh, reputation of residential assisted living facilities. So the residential ones are like the housing facilities. People look at it as mom and pop. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes you'll see some facilities you'll walk in and it looks just like somebody, a regular home. Um, so what I want to change as far as the students that come to me, when someone comes in, I want them to see it as a professional business. Clean, smells good, everything's in order. You have the the sign in, you have safety measures, you have residents that look clean, smell clean, look happy, they're not slumped on the chair. Um, so that's what uh, makes me, you know, stand apart. So that's yeah. your standard. That's my standard. And and you wanted to teach other people how to operate at that same standard. At that when same they, standard. When they open theirs. Because yeah. honestly, um, I've never heard of someone that taught other people how to open their own assisted living program mm-hmm. uh, or assisted living homes. 
And so when we spoke, I was like, yes, this is amazing. Like, how do you do this? Especially someone who looks like, you know, me, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I just haven't seen it. I always thought that this was something that was done from uh, medical professionals or um, people who, you know, like own hospitals and stuff. They're the Mm -hmm. ones who open these. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that it was something that the average person actually has access to Mm -hmm. be able to do. So if I was somebody, me, brand mm-hmm. speaking, I'm just like, you know what? I love my big mama. I do love my big mama. I do. Hey, big mama. Um, <laughs> um, <clears throat> but I want to make sure that my big mama has some place that's safe, secure uh, for her to be that is held to the standard that I would like to see her care be in. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know what? Instead of sending her to a facility, I got some money put aside. I want to try to see if I can open my own facility. What would be some steps that I would go mm-hmm. through in order to try to make that happen? So, um, first of all, it starts with the mindset. Mm-hmm. You have to make sure that what you're about to jump in, you're structured, you're organized, and you're ready to go. Mm-hmm. Um, second, pick out the, you know, the location. Location is everything. Mm-hmm. So, um, you want to make sure it's a location where seniors are retiring, um, you have to go to a zoning department because they're the ones that gives you the yes or the no, because mm-hmm. you don't want to purchase a property and now you can't um, use that as a facility. So go to zoning. Um, next, there's di- just different steps as far as inspections, health inspection, um, fire inspection, different things like that. But I would say, um, you know, start with zoning and start with a my good mindset and know what location that you want when uh when i used to have my gym mm-hmm. an expense that i never took into account i did that i jumped off the cliff i was like you know what i want a gym so i went and i did it not mm-hmm. knowing really the systems and the structures that i need to have mm-hmm. one of the things that really caught me off guard was the cost of the paperwork you don't think mm-hmm. about that you you're talking about, about like these exp- inspections and all of this stuff right. like that stuff can add up and be costly which was not something i took into account i'm thinking oh i have to get these machines mm-hmm. i need you know these different things for the physical aspects of the business that paperwork tripped me up and so uh when you're talking about those steps and having the inspections and make sure you're fitting zoning and all those mm-hmm. uh those are some really really good tips to give and i know that uh you'll be providing a checklist for those who are interested yes Yes. yep uh, for those who are interested in learning how to open up your own senior living facility uh and so that checklist is going to be a good guide for you and it's free right yes it is it is free and you know we have the boomers who Mm -hmm. are who are out and many of us do have elders that we love and we care for and we might not like the type of care that they're receiving. So if you're already the one who has stepped in as the caretaker, it may be a good business model for you to look into. Right, right. Uh, so how many facilities do you have right now? So right now I just have one facility. Mm-hmm. Um, I did want to expand, but then I thought about my lifestyle mm-hmm. and my love for teaching. Mm-hmm. So I put the two and two together. I like teaching more. Mm-hmm. So, and I want to see better assisted living facilities. So I chose the route of teaching, but I do have one facility. You know what? You could go and audit other senior living facilities. Yes, I actually do that. Yes. Yeah, I do that. Hold them yes. accountable. <laughs> I do yes. that. I do that. That's yes. great. So you know that uh, if someone comes in as a student, they know the standard that they're going to have to abide by mm-hmm. in order to open the facility. And so... Uh, with the senior living facility structure, what are some big red flags that you see in some of the places that you've gone and visited? Red flag, when you come in, you don't see a login book. Mm. So people are coming in and out. No one's signing in. How do you know? It's basically not safe. Mm-hmm. Um, another red flag is when you see medication just everywhere Mm -hmm. um or you see residents just randomly sitting around because in actuality they're actually supposed to be active there should there's supposed to be um activities for them 
Um, so those are the big red flags that you can see just coming in. Mm -hmm. Um, the underlying is paperwork. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, they get fined for paperwork. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that I look out for, for students as well too, because a lot of the consultants, they help you with the licensing. You get the licensing, but they don't teach you how to keep your license. Oh. They don't teach you how to keep quality, um, residents, keep quality staff. And they don't teach you how to build a relationship with the inspectors mm -hmm. that are supposed to give you the license. Welcome. My name is Martha Janvier and I'm the owner and CEO of Peace of His Cornerstone LLC. We provide residential assisted living facility homes throughout Florida. We offer medication management, assistance with activities of daily living, health, wellness, and social activities, games, and so much more. Most importantly, we focus on improving the quality of life of our residents by implementing what matters to them into their new home. Call us today to schedule a tour of our facilities. If you're enjoying the interview, don't forget to grab your free checklist below. Now back to our interview with Martha. So um, that's what I do. So I look at the outer and then I also look at the underlying, the paperwork and all that. That's awesome. And yeah. so you're able to, I, I, lo I love that you're not just someone who's like, yeah, I said I wanted to go do it. I opened this and that's that. Like you have, you really operate by a certain um, code of conduct yeah. when it comes to this. And so uh, if I was someone who wanted to start my own facility mm -hmm. um and i reached out to you I, I, do you need to be in the medical field to do this anyone can do it um as long as you have a high school diploma you have a clean background mm -hmm. you can go ahead and do it but i would say you have to have that structured mindset but mm -hmm. anyone can open up an assisted living facility not just a nurse not just a doctor none of that anybody financially what who do you think will be the costs that are associated with opening your own facility? So it all depends. It depends on the area. It depends what you already have. For myself, I can speak for myself. I already had a property. Um, I already had the furniture and all of that. Um, I would say in total, everything cost it cost roughly around between twenty to thirty thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and that's just me just making sure I have updated systems. My facility looks presentable. Um, there's a portion where the licensing agency they're going to have they're going to ask you for a set amount of money. Mm -hmm. It can be anywhere between as low as ten thousand up to eighty thousand, but that doesn't mean you have to have that cash mm -hmm. um, ready. Just in, it could be credit cards put together. They just want to see that you have those readily available if there were an emergency mm. between like six to just like any business. They want to make sure that you can maintain the business yeah. for up to a year. So it's just so. like the funds to be able to fluctuate with exactly. the economy or it's anything that, okay, that can happen with the business. And so are there grants that people could use to be able to do this business or is it you have to raise capital? Um, you have to raise the capital, but if you had already an established LLC, you mm -hmm. can apply for loans. Um, there's uh, mom and pop grants that you apply for. You could apply for um, some people. They use their 401k. Mm -hmm. Basically, you just have to invest in yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so what? OK, so we're looking at all in. If you already have a property, mm -hmm. um, you're probably going to spend anywhere from 20 to 30,000. Mm -hmm. Uh, what would be the return on the investment with so, a senior living facility? Okay. So my first year I made six figures, mm -hmm. but like I said, the business hat had, had mm -hmm. to come in. So I, the money was coming in. I was like, Oh my gosh, this is amazing. But then one of the main things I want to let students know is you have to look at payroll. Mm -hmm. You have to look if you have a mortgage or a rent. So all of that comes into play. There's money in it but you have to make sure you manage it well. Mm -hmm. um, another thing too is how you're pricing everything. So you can have a semi-private room where you have two residents. Um, you can charge whichever you want because it's your business. 
you can charge up to three thousand, four thousand. Just pay attention to what your compared competitors are charging, mm -hmm. and then you can go from there. That's per resident. Per resident. Mm -hmm. Per month. Per month. Let me ask you something. What makes the like? So if I was to go and rent a home, mm -hmm. like a whole home, mm -hmm. I wouldn't pay that much for me individually for like a home. Mm -hmm. um, but per per senior, they're gonna pay. Even if they share a room, they're gonna pay around that. Yeah. What does that include? Does that include their care? Like what all comes into that rate? So with that rate. Um, which is another thing that I learned in the business, that's the um, room and board. Mm -hmm. So for example, you can charge $3,000, that's the room and board. But remember, everyone is different. Mm -hmm. So you may have a senior that may not require as much. So you may have a senior that can eat themselves, can go to the restroom themselves. And then you have another where you have to assist them to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So, of course, the one that you're assisting, now you're charging mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. So you have the standard room and board and then the care mm -hmm. you're charging for their care. So it could be more. So this is a very lucrative business model. It, it definitely is a lucrative, lucrative, but you just have to make sure, um, you know, you structure yourself well. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's, you're really hitting the nail on the head with yeah. that. Like, structure, 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 structure. Because the money will come in and then it'll be like a hole in your pocket mm -hmm. if you're not structured. Can you tell me of like a nightmare story you've had with uh, assisted living or senior, assisted living? Is that mm -hmm. a, yes. A nightmare that you've had with assisted living? A nightmare. Yes. So, um, be careful for the ho the hospitals or the so the case managers that says I have a very good client pay they they're gonna be able to pay well I just need them discharged the before the weekend. That's the they're trying to hear. <laughs> <laughs> you hear? Okay, um, I can. This patient could pay up to four thousand dollars, and you're ooh, four thousand. But they just have to be discharged before the weekend. That's a red flag right there. So I did have a client. Um, they discharged to me. I did the assessment. But lo and behold, I did not know the underlying um, issues that she had. Mm -hmm. uh, within a month, I started noticing some damages in my home. Mm -hmm. So um, I realized there was some information that was um, left out. Left out. Mm -hmm. Because I thought about it. I was like, $4,000, but nobody else wanted to take her? Mm -hmm. it, it, it didn't make any sense. So that was a nightmare for me because now I had to get that fixed and then have her transferred to another facility. Because once you get them, it's a little bit hard to discharge them if you don't know how to do that, how to do the process. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, I would say that part was the nightmare for me, having somebody there. So it, you said once you get them, it's a little hard to discharge them. So it's almost like guaranteed residual income. It's, it's guaranteed. Yeah. It's guaranteed. I got you. And then so the red flag was that the hospital is trying to hurry up and get rid of them. Right. There's a reason why they're they, trying to hurry up Because it shouldn't be such of a rush and it shouldn't be that hard because if you look at $4,000 is a lot. Mm -hmm. So why aren't other facilities, you know, why isn't anybody else being contacted? Why are they rushing and pushing that client on you? Maybe because everybody else knows about this person and they know that you're the new one on the block. Mm. So you probably don't know. So here you are. But um, I learned um, anything that's too quick, too easy. You have to be you have to pay attention. Be cautious. Yeah, be very cautious. And so you've had the living uh, facility that, that you the living um, assisted living. Yeah, I'm struggling with this. <laughs> Twist that word. <laughs> OK, so you've had the assisted living home now mm -hmm. for how many years? Uh, 2019. So it's going to be what, almost five years now. Five years almost, you've been doing this. Yeah. You're like a vet now. I, I still feel like a baby, but you know, um, technically I am a vet in it now. Yeah, you're yeah. a vet 10 years in, in nursing in the medical field. In yeah, the medical field. And 10 years in the medical field, five years in owning your own assisted living home. Yeah. Um, and you know, you've developed this amazing program to be able to teach other people who want to get into this. I honest to goodness thought that this was only for people who were in the medical field. I didn't mm -hmm. know that I myself could be an owner yes, and can. just hire the right people to be in there. Yes, you can. You can. Um, so let me be specific. If someone has real estate, you mm -hmm. have multiple properties. Mm -hmm. This is a good business for you where you don't have to be um, working in the business. You can just hire an administrator and then they run the business for you. 
So instead of just renting um, a property to someone and you probably rent it for what, like two to three thousand dollars a month mm -hmm. per client, you can get two, three thousand a month. Yeah. So. So what would be the ideal home structure for this? What okay. would that look like? So for residential, it has to look home like. So the standard three to four bedroom, you put um, up to two residents in there. But I just want to make sure you know that uh, with zoning, depending on your area, sometimes they cap you. Sometimes the max you could have in that home is six to eight. It all depends. Um, but just a home like environment. But make sure it looks presentable. Mm -hmm. Make sure it looks nice. It's clean. It's updated. Just because the people are seniors doesn't mean you don't have to have technology in there. I have everything updated. Mm -hmm. So when people come in there, guests, visitors, family, everybody wants to live in there. Mm -hmm. I I would live there. <laughs> <laughs> I would live there. Yeah. yeah. Some places you can't, you can't even sit. So can people yeah. who purchase uh, two level homes or three level homes, would that be an ideal situation or they need to be one level? Um, no, it can be two level, but just think of liability think of the type of clientele you're ad, um, admitting. So for example, if you're admitting people that are using walkers or canes, that may not be ideal, um, but it is possible where you can get the people that just needs a retirement home, mm -hmm. someone that just needs company or medication management and they can do going up the stairs. Yeah, that's fine, but you'll be limited as far as the clients. Okay, so I have another question. I'm like really intrigued. Uh, <laughs> so do you provide the medical staff that manages their medication and stuff or is it their insurance that provides that for them inside of your facility or your home? Okay, so everything is teamwork. So as far as like the medication management, the Caregivers that I hire, they have to have that certification already. Mm -hmm. So that's within their scope of um, their their work scope. So they're assisting the resident mm -hmm. with their medication. As far as like the nurses and doctors, the resident's insurance covers that. I see. So you yourself have a team that works specifically for your assisted living home. Yes. So they come in like nine to five. Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. That's yes, so cool. yes, yes. I feel like a whole boss. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. That is so neat. And so yes. they're there dedicated to your senior living, um, your, your assisted living home. Yes. And uh, when they, when the, uh, the, the residents, they pass or they move on to another facility, mm -hmm. The staff stays. They stay. That's my. That's your people. That's my people. That's so cool. I yeah. always thought it was tied to insurance and. No, you that's have cool. Yeah, I have my people. We have with the assisted living. You have to have someone working twenty four hours. So let me ask you. So we we talking about numbers now, right? Mm -hmm. So you said, um, you know, you were twenty thirty thousand in because you already owned the home, or you had already uh, acquired a home. Mm -hmm. um, you made six figures your first year. How much do you spend monthly, if you don't mind? Average. You can give me a guesstimate here. Mm -hmm. I'm not specific. I'm trying to give the listener an idea mm -hmm. of the expenses that are associated with this type of investment because mm -hmm. the return looks amazing. Like it what? Looks amazing. Yes. Three thousand per person. Yes. <laughs> um, what are you spending on staff monthly? So that is the biggest expense. Yeah. Staff. Um. So off the top of my head, a range per month, I would say up to about. Fourteen, I would say between eight to ten thousand dollars. Eight to ten thousand dollars. So you have to make sure that you have, so you have beds that essentially pay for the staff, and then mm -hmm. the other beds would be your profit. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. That's that's neat. See, this is business model. Good thing. Yes, yes. We'll be a strategic here. This is cool. Yes. Okay. And so, um, for someone who um, is really looking to get into this space, you know, I mentioned a couple of times throughout our session here today, but you do have a course. Yes. And so yes. this course, can you talk to me about it? Why did you decide to create it? Yes. Like, what's the process? Talk to me about your big up your course. Here. I want to learn. Yes. So um, with the course, I basically teach um, the student from the beginning to the end and meaning, OK, after you get your licensing, how do you hire um, how do you get that quality resident, how to price, um, 
I teach them how to build that relationship with the inspector, um, how to pass all inspections, even after myself. Mm-hmm. And then I just teach them how to, um, you know, do assessments, um, just that in general. Like I teach you everything you need to know, because when I um, started off, I was given, although the person that taught me, she was really good, but I feel like I didn't really learn that the inside so what like you, what comes with it? What do you feel like your course answers that other people's courses and programs don't? I keep it real with you. Mm-hmm. I give you the what can possibly happen, mistakes that can happen, um, whether they're financial, um, a liability. I teach you how to overcome, um, you know, common mistakes. Let's say uh, an inspector comes in and they notice that your paperwork is not up to date. You can, there's some of the fines that's up to five to $10,000. Mm. So that's already business. You investing into your business, you're already spending money. You don't want to spend even more money paying for fines. Mm-hmm. So um, I teach you what to avoid as far as like fines. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So starting out, all right, so we've got from not knowing anything mm-hmm. to going through the past, getting like your license and you know, being even prepared for, um, occurrences that you might not expect mistakes that may happen Mm -hmm. uh so we're just starting out how how do you help me how does your course help me if i'm just starting out like me i am intrigued but girl i don't know what to do (laughs) so i start off um i want to make sure that you understand what an assisted living facility is Mm -hmm. not a nursing home not a hospital basically housing for elderly so as long as you under the most important part understanding the realm of the business next what is your vision Mm -hmm. what's your goal what's the location what's the type of clientele that you you're you're looking to um admit um uh, next pricing uh next what type of staff Mm-hmm. Because staff could make it could make you or break you. Mm-hmm. So if you um, hire someone and that person is not proficient in a certain language, let's say you go to a, biz- a business. If you start your business in a certain community, let's say they speak Spanish, majority of the people, you're not just going to hire staff that speaks English only. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to make so all of those things. I just make sure that you understand mm-hmm. all of those. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And with the program, how long is it? Um, it's self-paced. Mm-hmm. So um, I basically pre-record everything that you need to know. Um, I have uh, homework. Mm-hmm. And um, I offer the group courses as well, the group um, sessions as well, too, just to make sure that everybody did their homework um, and understand what's going on. But it's self-paced. It's for anyone that's busy, um, people that can't sit in one sitting, um, you can take it in. Inc- you could uh, look at the videos in increments. It's for anyone. It's self-paced. I love that. Mm-hmm. And you also offer another style as well. You have one-on-one services. Yes. Okay. Because <laughs> for me, I you know, I would be like, can you hold my hand? Yes. Can you please hold my hand That's me. This That's me. Yes. yes. And so with the one-on-one services, how does that look different than the self-paced with weekly coaching calls? Is that it? Yes. Okay. So how does that look different? So um, with that, I basically am your brain. Mm -hmm. Um, Of course, I push you to do as much as you can because you're not effective if you don't know what's going on. So don't just rely on me. But I assist with the paperwork. Um, I'm basically your brain. I push you. um, I call up. I find resources like third parties. So, Mm -hmm. for example, if you need a good company for a fire alarm system or whichever I coordinate that and assist with that as well, too. But the biggest thing is paperwork, which nobody really wants to do because it's a lot. Paperwork is stressful. I don't know this, like, for a senior living, um, assisted living. Lord, (laughs) help me. I don't know if I'm the only one who confuses those between a senior living facility and an assisted living home. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between the two? Um, so you're talking about an assisted living facility versus a group home? I, I think so. Okay. So what assisted living facility, um, just in the word, you're assisting mm-hmm. the person, um, the elderly or whichever population that uses decide. And then the group home is usually, um, 
a lot more paperwork, mm -hmm. a lot more monitoring, mm -hmm. um, and you don't choose the clientele that okay. you want. I yeah. used to work at this, I don't know if you ever heard of um, Atria. It was Atria. Atria. Uh -huh. It's this one in Buckhead. Okay. That's a nice area. You got Bankhead and you got Buckhead. <laughs> Buckhead is a nice area. So I used to work at that senior, it was a senior living facility. That's what okay. they called it. So that's okay. why I keep twisting it up. Ah, okay. So I worked at the front desk, mm -hmm. right? And um, very interesting because a lot of those seniors were still calling me little color girl. And yeah. and they would forget. They were like, you're such a nice color girl. Uh, yeah. But you know what I'm forced to say? I'm forced mm -hmm. to say, well, thank you. Because they, they, they can't remember. Some mm -hmm. of them couldn't remember that that's yeah. how they were speaking to me and stuff. So it was a big adjustment mm -hmm. in learning experience for me. But I had to think about, I was like, why do I keep calling this a senior living facility? And mm -hmm. it was because of my attachment to where I used to work. Ah. So I do apologize. I no, 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 like, no. Why no. she keep messing this up? No, no, it's okay. It's, <laughs> it's a common thing. Some It happens. Mm -hmm. It happens. Okay. Yeah. I appreciate you for being patient with me on of that. Of course, of course. Uh, but you you have these various programs. You have the uh, the self paced program, which let me be honest with y'all. If this is something that you want to do, I honestly, me personally, I would want to have my hand held. Uh, paperwork alone is a headache, and I can picture people going through this process, getting to the paperwork, and quitting. Yeah. Because they don't want to have to deal it's with a it. Lot. Um. I'm thinking about taking her program because I like to invest my money and I want my money to work for itself. And this may be a very good avenue for me. So for me, I'm more uh, called to the having my hand held. I'd be like, Martha, girl, girl, this paperwork is stressing me out. Can you help me, please? Uh, so I would definitely encourage you all start with the checklist. You have your free checklist available to them. Yeah, that's going to help them for anybody who's interested in starting their own assisted living a program, having your own assisted living home. Uh, I really feel like the checklist is going to be the perfect guide for you, for you to be able to say, all right, these are the systems and structure I need to have in place. Now, the execution of that is when you're going to need the coaching, yes. when you're going to need the help, the strategy. And so whether that be the self-paced program, if you're one of those people who are like, I'm a go-getter, I get it done, I'm going to be disciplined, that's for you. If you're someone like myself who might have a little taste of attention uh, disorder. <laughs> yeah. um, I have a little taste majority of... majority of us. Uh, right, a little taste of, I, I, this is something I want to do, but I, for some reason I'm too busy and I keep getting distracted. I would probably go with the one-on-one -on -one coaching route. Uh, you know, I love that you're in this space. I appreciate you being in this space. Thank you. I value that you honored yourself in following the, the passion that you have in doing mm. this. Because there aren't many people who look like us that have stepped in this space. Right. Yep. You might be the only one I know, honestly. <laughs> so I just want to mm -hmm. give you your flowers in that. Thank you. Um, and to thank you for being you and thank you for thriving in with the area that you're thriving in and leading the way. Thank for, you. For more of us to enter into that space. Thank you. You're yeah, welcome. that's my um, biggest goal is just to put it out there because. Um, I noticed that there aren't people that look like us, mm -hmm. um, young, uh, black, usually it's like the older community that's in this business, mm -hmm. but the seniors need, you know, young people, lively people, um, you know, people that'll, you know, just bring something to the energy, table, like some energy, light, something, you know, you know, my favorite videos are with like the young CNAs that are in there with them and like they're, they're yes, in the dancing I love the that. just yes. happy and stuff now could you imagine if you created a cultivated environment of that type of positive energy and it's yeah. not just like we're housing you here here yes you know what I mean yes that's amazing yes so uh you guys make sure description box below click on the link grab your checklist tell Martha thank you <laughs> thank you sis thank you sis for opening our minds uh, opening our level of expectations of what come with this, showing us that there's a bag in more ways than one. Right. Oftentimes on my platform, I talk about investing in the stock market. Mm -hmm. I talk about uh, just, I interviewed someone uh, recently talking about investing in cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you talk about investing into physical assets, uh, mm -hmm. you know, doing this could be a wonderful model because 
people are going to continue to age. Yes, yes. There's always going to yes. be a, a model, a, a space for this. Exactly. I have a bonus as well, too. Uh-oh, bonus! Yes. And this feels exclusive. <laughs> this feels exclusive. The, but this bonus will be for students that actually um, pursue the mm. course. Um, I teach you how to... So the assisted living facility, once you get your license, you could build on two more businesses hmm. on top of it. You have adult daycare and you have um, independent living and actually that's three respite care. So that's four in one. What's respite care? Respite care is like, let's say you're going on vacation, but you can't take grandma with you. Um, and you need her to be some, you need someone to watch her for two weeks. Mm -hmm. So if you have an empty bed in your facility for two weeks, you can charge someone. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's like me. Airbnb for seniors. Right, for That's seniors. So, cool. so, I mean, you have to, you know, this business is not just one. You can do so much with it once you get the license. So the license, how long does the license take? Um, the licensing process, mm -hmm. um, it all depends. Six months up to a year. Mm -hmm. So it all depends um, because you're not in control. You have to work with third party mm -hmm. um, individuals, people that will be... Um, doing the permits, um, installing. Mm -hmm. So, but you just have to make sure you pick the right people. But that's why you work with them through that process. Right. So, right. So they, they can know, like you've gone through the process, you know who some of the right people are to talk exactly. to, you know what questions to answer, you know how the paperwork's supposed to be filled out. You, you know the thing. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh man. So we got a bonus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So, uh, Martha, thank you so much for spending time with me of on, on the Living Bougie and Balance podcast in the Bougie Lounge. It's so good to have you come all the way up from Miami. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much, <laughs> sis. Y'all be sure to go grab that freebie. Let her know that a Bougie Bestie um, is there. She has to know where y'all came from. And until next time, besties, I will see you here in the Bougie Lounge on Living Bougie and Balance podcast. Bye. <laughs> Do you want to start a new career in the senior care industry and make a difference in people's lives? Introducing Strategic Success 316. How to open an assisted living facility. Our self-paced online course teaches you everything you need to know to get started. Our experienced instructors will guide you through every step of the process from finding the right location licensing to marketing your facility effectively here's a bonus if you sign up today you'll receive a checklist of all the requirements needed by the licensing agency and my new book don't wait any longer to start your journey enroll in strategic success 316 and make a difference in the lives of those who need it the most